Man, I can't even begin to tell you how excited I am or how happy I am that evolution is over with. I am thrilled that we are moving on from WWE Evolution. It's Tuesday. I'm recording this on Monday before Raw. So whatever happens on Raw tonight regarding Evolution, I don't know. We'll talk about it on the podcast this coming weekend. But I am happy, I'm thrilled, I'm excited, I'm elated that Evolution is over with. Now, we just have one more of these bullshit shows to get through. Crown Jewel on Friday. The majority of this podcast today is going to be going over everything leading into Crown Jewel. And it's Tuesday. I understand that I don't usually upload a part three of my weekly podcast on a Tuesday. Usually it's a Monday or a Sunday, but being that the Evolution review went up so late on early, early Monday morning, I didn't want to kind of double upload. I didn't want to double dip into the YouTube pool. So we're doing this on Tuesday to kind of let the Evolution pay-per-view breathe and do what it needs to do. We're going to talk about Crown Jewel. We're going to talk about everything leading up to Crown Jewel. A lot of controversy still. WWE in Saudi Arabia. They're not changing their stance. John Cena, probably not going to be working Crown Jewel. Same thing goes for Daniel Bryan. We will find all of that out on Monday and Tuesday, respectively. I'm also hearing rumors of a possible change to the WWE Universal Championship match. So we'll talk about that as well. But I want to start off with a uh, a little cold open here, man, before we get into the bulk of the podcast. I mentioned that I was happy about Evolution, you know, just being over with. And now that I had a good 24 hours to just kind of sit and reminisce on everything. Do I want to see another Evolution pay-per-view? Yes, I do. Was it history? That is a subjective thing. Your thought of history or your idea of history might not be the same as my idea of history. You see, when I look at what WWE did leading into the pay-per-view, it was nowhere near historic. The card that they put together was nowhere near historic. They could have. They could have done a lot of things differently to make it historic. By the end of the night, I don't think WWE made history, per se, with WWE Evolution. I don't. The only aspect of it that I see being historic is that this could lead to bigger things for the women, which I am a huge advocate of. I love everything that they're doing in developmental. I love everything that they're doing on NXT and with the Mae Young Classic every year. I love it. That is what the real evolution to me is. The evolution that you're watching on Raw and SmackDown is a crock of shit. It's not an evolution. It's going backwards. Ronda is not an evolution. Nikki Bella is not an evolution. Nia Jax is not an evolution. I'm sorry. These things don't compute with me. And evolution is building on what Sasha and Bayley did, and WWE is doing everything opposite of that. That's just the way I see it. History was not made on Sunday night. The only aspect of history that I see is that this is going to happen on a more frequent basis. This could lead to bigger things that you, me, and everybody else in the community don't know of yet. WWE could ultimately give the women their own program. WWE can have a completely different world outside the men for the women. They could have their own show, their own pay-per-views, etc., etc. This is a good building block, a good foundation to begin building. But was Sunday Night Historic? Absolutely not. Now, a lot of the people in the community were very vocal, especially aimed towards me because of my stance on what I think WWE did with Evolution. I don't really give a shit. I don't give a shit whatsoever. 
You see, the community is full of nothing but yes-men. They look for the overwhelming positive in everything without looking at whatever negatives there are. This is a common disease in the YWC. This is a common disease on Twitter. All because the women had their own pay-per-view that does not give you the right to favor the women over the men. It doesn't give you the right to give the WWE an easy way out because they catered to the women completely, 100% on Sunday night. That is absolutely ridiculous. I fucking hate shows like this because in actuality, everybody knows, everybody with a level head knows that this show was borderline decent. It wasn't good. It wasn't historic. It wasn't great. It wasn't spectacular. It wasn't fabulous. It wasn't fantastic. Or any of those exclamation words that you want to use. It wasn't. You get one idiot in the community who says it's good, and then people who wanted to succeed so much... And people who are overwhelmingly looking for the positives on such a completely different level than everybody else. You're going to hang on to that one good review and it's going to spread like wildfire. Everybody's going to jump on board and say, oh, it was good. Oh, it was great. Oh, it was the best pay-per-view of the year. Oh, it was a 9 out of 10. I don't understand where, where this level of mediocrity has come from. I really don't get it. Everyone within the community is mediocre. 9 out of 10. Best pay-per-view of the year. I don't know where you're getting your ratings from. Do you honestly feel this way? Or are you just leeching off somebody else who said it was a 9 out of 10? Best pay-per-view of the year. I fucking hate shows like this because it divides everybody. And nobody thinks logically. Nobody thinks for themselves. And then when I say something that's against the grain, people want to call me a sexist. People want to call me negative. People want to say that I say nothing positive. People want to say that I bitch, moan, complain, rant, rave, etc., etc., etc. Why? Because I'm speaking the truth. I'm saying something that everybody else is not saying, yet I'm the, I'm the wrong one. Instead of thinking for yourselves like I am, you guys are just leeching off of everybody else that's giving positive feedback. WWE has no fucking competition. None. The lack of competition in the world of professional wrestling right now is one of the biggest downfalls of WWE creative. They don't care. They're going to go out there and seek, 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 seek. They'll find... Just like they did in Saudi Arabia, just like they did with Fox Sports, just like they did with NBC Universal, they're making all this kinds of money. And people are going to attribute that to what you see on television as success. That could not be farther from the truth. All because WWE's making all this kinds of money, that doesn't mean that they're putting on good television. I, I don't understand everybody's level of mediocrity and it's so much more apparent this year. Like, I understand you want to support women's wrestling. So do I. But do it with a level head. Do it with some common fucking sense. Do it with some logic, please. I, I, I urge everyone in the community to think for themselves instead of following the fucking sheep with this sheep-like mentality where one positive review turns into a thousand positive reviews because you don't know any better. The show was not great by any means. It was not historic by any means. What you've seen on Sunday was not historic. It had history-making possibilities that we, as a community, can't see yet. And I thought what was presented was decent... But in the end, it was a run-of-the-mill, average pay-per-view at best. Three great matches do not make a great pay-per-view. That's one match per hour. 
We had EO and Tony Storm, which was cut severely and was not a clear indication of what the tournament was about. I felt robbed with EO and Tony. That should have been the best match of the entire tournament. I'm not even talking about best match of the night. Should have been the best match of the tournament, and it was not. You're going to have a finals like that, and you're not going to give me the best match of the tournament? Why? I want some fucking company insider or some fucking analyst on YouTube or, or Twitter to tell me why that match was only given 10 minutes, but Ronda Rousey and Nikki Bella went close to 20. Kyrie and Shayna Baszler, two of the best workers that the women have in their entire company. Shayna Baszler's a fucking monster. Kyrie Sane, lover or hater, she's a great fucking worker. So that makes two NXT matches at the top of the list right now for Evolution. That is a evolution when you look at it. Charlotte and Becky, I enjoyed it. Was it one of the best women's matches that we've seen in recent memory? Absolutely. Was it one of the best women's matches of all time? That's up for debate. The right winner won. That's all I cared about. WWE's lucky that they went with Becky winning that match. Otherwise, I would have shit all over it. But it wasn't for me. I enjoyed what they did. The story was great. Both women worked their asses off and set the level of expectation that we want for a division. Too many bells and whistles for me. I didn't like certain aspects of the match where Charlotte just kept coming back and coming back and coming back, but it told a great story, and hopefully that's the end. So that makes three matches out of eight that were on that show. That's not history. That's not great. That's not the best pay-per-view of the year. Tone your fucking level of expectation down or tone tone your level of positivity down and think with a fucking level head, please. Tired of the fucking community you know, trying to fucking lynch me, coming after me like a fucking mob, tired of the fucking community trying to crucify me and hang me on a fucking cross, burning me alive because of the views that I give on WWE. You don't like what I say here. I'm not telling you to watch. But what I say here is something that a lot of people are feeling, yet other people in the community aren't talking about because they don't want to push certain buttons. They don't want to Walk a line that's going to get them in trouble with whomever they're trying to look good for. Think on your own. Okay? How is this fucking history when your main event is Nikki Bella versus Ronda Rousey? That does not signify history to me. It has history-making elements as a whole for the women. But a battle royal with a shit winner... Uh, an opening tag team match there with Trish and Lita that didn't really get me excited whatsoever outside the fact that Trish and Lita looked great for their age and hopped right in like they never missed a beat. And then we had a six-woman tag that we've seen every fucking week on Monday Night Raw all year. Then you got Nikki Bella and Ronda Rousey in the main event. That history does not make. So next time you want to come at me with certain opinions or certain views and you want to lynch me for whatever reason, I I want you to look yourself in the mirror. If you're one of these people who spoke overly positive about something that was decent at best, decent at best, then you're the you're the, the reason, you're the problem with everything that this community has. You're the problem that this community just continues to just make over and over and over again. I don't understand why people can't think for themselves. Did everybody forget the build leading up to this show? I mean, are you watching the weekly programs like I am, or are you just oblivious to everything that goes on week to week? WWE went into this with no effort, no care, no expectation, and then what do you expect to happen? Your low level of expectation, of course it's going to be a good show because they put no effort into it. So they have to have a good show. What they did was a decent effort. The women worked their ass off. And I'm proud of that. I'm proud that the women worked their ass off. I'm proud that the women went into this thing because of WWE management not giving them anything and not showing them any importance. I'm glad that they used that as fuel to go out there and have a kick-ass fucking performance. 
The work right on the show was great. Was it history? No. Think for yourselves instead of leeching off everybody else's fucking opinion and turning it around, making it yours. This is why I'm so proud of what I do here. I love being against the grain. I love calling out shit when I see it. A lot of people in this community think illogically. They don't watch the product like I do. I've been doing this for a very long time. I've been watching the WWE for over 30 years. You're not going to get one by me. You might at some points, but most of the time you're not going to get one by me. Think for yourselves. I didn't get to 100K by following other people's leads. I didn't get to 100K by fucking sucking dick, okay? It may, have take, it may have taken me a little bit longer than everybody else to get to 100K, but at the end of the day, I'm going to sit here and look you directly in the fucking face. I did it right. I blazed my own path. I did it my way. I didn't sit here and watch a fucking review and then take what they say and spawn it off as my own opinion. Decent. Was it one of the better shows of the year? It had no choice but to be. Was it history? No. Great, spectacular, fantastic, out of this world, best pay-per-view of the year, 9 out of 10. No, 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 no. Decent. I'm glad it's over. Crown Jewel's on Friday. I can't wait for it to be over. I can't wait to get back to a regularly scheduled pay-per-view calendar. Think for yourselves, please. Those are my final thoughts on evolution. Let's get into the fucking show, man. We're going to hit the introduction. I'll be right back, man. This is episode 245, part number three of Off the Script, your crown jewel edition right here on OTS, man. I'll see you guys in a little bit, and we'll talk crown jewel. Off this shitty fucking product by coming on here and speaking the fucking goddamn truth about this fucking filth. I can book a better show taking a fucking dump after eating my fucking Chipotle chorizo with extra cheese. I don't give a fuck what anybody has to say. Have I ever? Of course not. WWE is great, dude. Uh, fuck you, Japan, and uh, Canada. Oh, Canada. Ah, Tony. What is it, bitch? Can I shut your dick? What is it, bitch? This is the number one fucking podcast. Right here on YouTube.com. This is off the script. want to thank you guys, as always, for joining me on another edition of Off The Script, man. This is episode 245. This is part number three to completely close out your Evolution Weekend. If you missed anything that I uploaded already, man, with the podcast this weekend, parts one and two, everything you need is linked in the annotation that you see in the top right corner of your screen, man. We went almost two hours talking about Roman Reigns and the entire Roman Reigns leukemia announcement that he made on Monday Night Raw. We dove into the entire topic. We did a chronological order of when the announcement was found out and made, who found out backstage, when everybody else found out, and where it's going to lead Monday Night Raw into the future, man. A big, big, big episode, man. Probably one of the best off the scripts that I've done in recent memory. So make sure you guys go and check that out. And then part two, we talked about Evolution. We went over everything Evolution, last minute news and rumors leading into the event, preview and predictions. So if you guys missed any of that, on top of the Call of Duty stuff, WW2K19, Spider-Man, NXT, everything you guys need is linked in the annotation that you see in the top right corner of your screen. So go and check that out and show support where available, man. Thank you all so very much for all of that. If you guys missed my Evolution pay-per-view review, it's also there. Uh, if you guys want my thoughts, almost an hour and a half of Evolution Talk following the show on Sunday night. Very in-depth. I give my uh, my my opinion on literally everything that happened on the show, man. So if you guys want to dive into that as well, it's also there for your viewing pleasure. 
Today we're going to talk about Crown Jewel. I'm going to do things a little bit differently, man. I got to I got to shout them out because they've been such a huge sponsor of the show and I, I got to show them some love, man, as do you guys. Harry's. Harry's is sponsoring the show, man, every single weekend. Harry's.com slash script. They're giving you guys a free trial shave set. All you guys have to do is use our unique link. Harry's.com slash script. And you see the little, the, the, the razor blades there. I mean, you got three colors to choose from. Now, I don't know what color you're going to get. I got all three because I love the product. But if you guys want the best shave of your life, man, and Harry's is so confident that it's going to be the best shave of your life, that they're giving you a free trial shave set. Now, all you do is go to the link, you enter in your information, you pay the shipping and handling, and boom, it's right in your mailbox, man. You're going to get a razor blade. You're going to you're gonna get a handle. You're going to get the foaming shave gel, which soothes, hydrates, and it smells fantastic. Plus, you're going to get a travel protective case as well for your blade, man. All for free. I'm telling you, I've been using it for six months now. And I think it's the absolute best shave I've ever had. I never stamp my name to anything if I don't use it and I don't believe in it. I believe in something like this because I use it every single week and you guys will as well. And I guarantee you, you're going to have the same feeling that I have at the end of that trial. And you're going to you're gonna go get everything else that they offer on their website. So go to the link, man. Use our unique link, harrys.com slash script. Shipping and handling only and you're going to get the best shave of your life, guaranteed, man. Shout out to Harry's for sponsoring the show. Great sponsors, love them, and I hope to continue work with them going on into the future. Let's get into the Crown Jewel talk, man. I want to start off with a few minor stories first, and then we'll hit the Crown Jewel stuff, but the majority of this podcast is going to be about Crown Jewel on Friday. Not going to include a preview and predictions for the show because, A, I don't care at this point, uh, I am waiting to see, and I know WWE announced this. They're going to announce the brackets for the World Cup. John Cena is probably not going to be in Saudi Arabia. Daniel Bryan's probably not going to be in Saudi Arabia. So I don't know what's going on with them. Apparently, storylines are probably going to be worked out on Monday and Tuesday, respectively, for their individual roles in Crown Jewel. And the tournament brackets will be set up on Monday and Tuesday. So I'll probably do a preview and predictions on Thursday, and then we'll attack the review on Friday. But I want to start off with John Cena's possible replacement for the World Cup at Crown Jewel. Bobby Lashley may be replacing John Cena, but he's also working injured. Now, Bobby Lashley and Finn Balor have battled on Monday Night Raw, as you guys seen last week. Balor won a pretty surprising, uh, in surprising fashion, in a match that I really didn't give a shit about. It didn't make much sense except to thank WWE's 50-50 booking. But there could also be a much bigger reason for this booking decision on Monday. Dave Meltzer said on Wrestling Observer Radio that Bobby Lashley is working hurt, and the only question is how bad the injury might be. He says, and I quote, There could be a reason we'll see in a week, but Lashley is hurt. I don't know if he's taking any time off, but he's definitely hurt, end quote. Now, I read in another report that Bobby Lashley is actually working with a separated shoulder. I don't know how true that report is, or a sprained shoulder. It's a shoulder injury. Only time will tell how bad Bobby Lashley's banged up, but hopefully he won't require any time off because, A, I'm not a fan of him, so I really don't give a shit. B, I think he's been a complete failure on the main roster, but I I, I hope for WWE's case and for Monday Night Raw's case that he is not hurt. This roster right now on Monday Night Raw is being decimated with injury. And if Bobby Lashley goes down, that's going to be a big blow. Because Bobby Lashley, no matter if you love him or hate him, he's still a big name on Monday Night Raw. So hopefully he won't require any time off from the ring. After all, they just turned him heel, placed him with Leo Rush, uh, and WWE's current state on Raw right now after losing Roman Reigns ain't looking too good. So they can't have... Any more big losses to that Raw roster right now. So we'll see what happens. But apparently, you know, he's going to work through the pain from what I read this week. And he might be the possible replacement for John Cena at Crown Jewel. We'll find out more tonight on Monday Night Raw. Or we'll find, well, you guys will be seeing this on Tuesday and hearing this on Tuesday. So we'll have find out on Monday Night Raw. Future plans for Aiden English on SmackDown Live. 
Now, Rusev and Aiden English toured all over the world with Rusev Day until Lana came into the picture and slowly moved English out. Then it all came to a head and Aiden turned on his former friend. There was a bit of a story where English teased that Lana did something in Milwaukee, but of course, that didn't go anywhere either. WWE completely fucked that up. They had something that you could have really invested your, your, your emotions in, and it was really intriguing, and WWE even had a nice little cliffhanger going on into the next few weeks after that with Aiden English. You know, him showing the, the clip, and then stopping it, and then, you know, teasing that he's going to show the rest next week. WWE seemingly ended this storyline and killed whatever momentum that it had. And, and this is not the, the first time that they did this with both Rusev and and Aiden English. I, I've mentioned several times that Aiden English and Rusev should have won the tag team championships at the Elimination Chamber. And if not then, they should have been placed in a tag team title match at WrestleMania and be given the tag team championships in front of WrestleMania's crowd. I stand by that opinion. And Rusev Day, to me, now the way it comes off on television is one thing. If you guys are in the audience, it's another because I've heard from people who have attended SmackDown Live in the recent weeks that Rusev Day was one of the biggest pops of the night. But the way it comes off on television, Rusev to me seems dead. And if you really dive deeper into the into the whole aspect of this storyline, Rusev has zero momentum right now. I don't give a shit who's cheering him. I don't give a shit the type of reaction that he's getting at live shows or house shows. I don't care. Rusev is at a point right now where he has zero momentum. And Aiden English and Rusev were so fucking hot that WWE failed to pull the trigger on what could have been a great babyface tag team in a tag team division at the time that was pretty much nothing but the Usos and the New Day with the Bludgeon Brothers being built up as a new tag team on SmackDown Live. They failed. WWE failed. And then the back and forth on Rusev Day, the fact that they teased the breakup, the fact that they moved Rusev on to nothing but, you know, meaningless matches with AJ Styles that went nowhere, putting him in a WWE Championship match and kind of teasing his elevation, and went nowhere. And now they're back to square one with Rusev, and he has no momentum whatsoever. And now you're looking at Aiden English... And this could have been a great pairing, a great feud, and WWE seemingly killed it. And if you don't think that they killed it, Rusev lost, or actually Aiden English lost, rather, in about 30 seconds to Rusev on SmackDown Live. Dead. This entire storyline is dead. It's over. That's how much WWE had invested in this storyline. When Aiden English goes out there in 30 seconds, dead. So now Aiden English is banished to catering pretty much for the rest of his WWE tenure. And Rusev, I don't know what WWE's doing with Rusev. I don't know what plans they have for Rusev. At this point, I don't even care. If they really wanted a World Cup feel, Rusev should have been in the World Cup. But they didn't even do that. So where is Rusev, really? How much momentum does Rusev really have? Zero. And at this point, I don't care. Dave Meltzer discussed the angle on Wrestling Observer Radio where he expressed some concern and a bit of astonishment at WWE's decision to seemingly send Aiden English down the card in such rapid fashion. 30 seconds. Aiden English. God. He said. He did all of that, and all you could do is a one-minute match? I knew i have been saying it for months when they started the turn, but the end result... I don't even know what the end result was. Aiden English is going to purgatory. I thought he would have at least... I don't know. I didn't expect him to get the win over Rusev, but I didn't think they would, you know, do what they did. I thought he would be competitive or something, or at least get a program out of it. A one-minute squash match, after how long they built this thing up, because they were doing the stop-start thing for a while, I mean, it's been a very long time. End quote. Now it seems like Aiden English and Rusev are done. Rusev is moving on. He will supposedly move up the ladder, hopefully. Hopefully, WWE can find some method here where he can get his momentum back slowly. And English is now going to be in purgatory. Well, that means catering, bottom of the barrel. I don't know. But it sucks. After all, Rusev did beat his former partner in mere minutes with no trouble. A man who helped him sell tons of Rusev Day shirts. It's a shame that WWE's booking is the way it is. 
I'm not happy about it. I'm sure you're not happy about it. I think when they were a tag team at the beginning of this calendar year, and the fact that WWE didn't strike while the iron was incredibly fucking hot, and I mean volcanic, lava-like hot, they fucked up. And this is a WWE problem throughout every single portion of this year. They do not capitalize when it needs to be capitalized upon. They did it even in NXT. I'll state it every fucking time. Johnny Gargano should have won the NXT title in January. They didn't do it. Now we're looking at Johnny kind of losing his momentum. Aleister Black is the hottest thing in NXT now with the attacker angle, and Johnny was forced to turn heel. Sometimes you got to go dark before you see the light again. Now, if only they did that with Roman Reigns. They fucked up Rusev Day. Now they're going back to square one. Meanwhile, it all could have been avoided. You could have given them a tag team title run. You could have had the break up there. And they could have moved each other. They could have moved each guy in different directions. And if they gave Rusev Day the tag team titles, who's to say Aiden English wouldn't have been a bigger star out of it? Now you're looking at Aiden English in a nothing role. Whereas if you gave them the tag team titles, maybe Aiden English would have developed some sort of, you know, I guess investment from the crowd. Now he's got nothing. And Rusev barely has anything. No, but this is WWE. The land where we don't do what needs to be done. Fucking sucks, man. Absolutely fucking ridiculous. Moving on, man. Let's talk about Crown Jewel. Let's talk about Crown Jewel. We got reasons why John Cena and Daniel Bryan refused to work WWE Crown Jewel in Saudi Arabia. Okay? Let me get this out of the way. I will be covering Crown Jewel. Okay? It's going to be a newsworthy show. There's going to be a new Universal Champion crowned. And there's going to be an eight-man tournament and a possible WWE Championship match that the entire world has been wanting since Daniel Bryan came back. Of course I'm going to watch. Do I agree with the show not being moved? I wish it was moved. I don't agree with them being there. But that doesn't mean I'm not going to watch. There's a lot of importance coming out of this show with major title implications. I'm going to watch, and I'm going to review. If your favorite YouTuber is not covering the show, then by all means, come on over here and hear someone's thoughts on the show. So maybe everybody not covering the show will get me more traffic in the end. It's a good business move. WWE hasn't had the national spotlight on them in this way for a very long time. If they've ever had it this way before, uh, Vince McMahon found himself in a pickle with the Saudi Arabian deal he signed for 10 years. First of all, why are you signing 10-year deals? That's one, that's one thing that I've been thinking about, pondering. Why are you signing 10-year deals? You know, a year or two to see how it goes. Now you're stuck for 10 years. You think WWE's going to get out of this just like that? Of course not. 10 years is a fucking long time. It's not even a year into the deal and things seem to be crumbling all around him in a political sense. But he just doesn't understand what the problem is. There have been rumors circulating that neither John Cena or Daniel Bryan want to go to Saudi Arabia for Crown Jewel. Robbie Fox of Barstool Sports said that they refused to go. Now, Dave Meltzer also reported in the Wrestling Observer Newsletter that several WWE superstars have expressed their concern about going as well. Now, John Cena and Daniel Bryan are two prominent figures in this company. If we had these guys come out and state that they refused to go, why wasn't there others in this company that followed suit? John Cena is is irreplaceable here. He, he's, he's untouchable. Daniel Bryan is untouchable. So if you have these two guys stating their opinions on, uh, on the situation and not wanting to go, why didn't we have others step up and, and kind of follow suit? You know, I, I thought it would have been a, a situation where they rallied the locker room up to kind of say, you know what, we don't really want to go. And what was WWE going to do? Go to Saudi Arabia with no fucking roster? I, I don't understand that. I, I really don't. So John Cena and Daniel Bryan are trying to set a good example, but I, I don't know what everybody else is, is doing. Strength in numbers is not really uh, accumulating much here, which I thought would be the case. You got women like Ronda Rousey and Alexa Bliss coming out stating that it's good for business. You got goons like JBL on, on Fox fucking TV. Stating that, well, how could we go there if it's not, uh, you know, how could we go there and, and and just back out? You know, we can't, we, we can't not go there. It's not going to signify change. I think WWE and having the WWE product in, in Saudi Arabia is the best chance for these people to change. 
Give me a fucking break. Seriously. JBL's a fucking idiot. Now, if he came out and said, well, this is a $450 million deal. This is a good business move by WWE. I can see why they wouldn't back out. It's a lot of fucking money. Boom. Done. Not in the sense that I put it, but, you know, these people are dancing around the fucking topic. How could we have this show and then all of a sudden cancel it? We, we feel like we can make a change there. All the political bullshit that we've heard from everybody in and around WWE. There have been rumors about Cena and Brian not wanting to go. Now, sources have confirmed that both Cena and Brian have expressed their interest in avoiding the entire event on Friday. Daniel Bryan has a huge moral conviction to the idea and is also a public figure, but nowhere near John Cena's. Now, John Cena is trying to get his foot in Hollywood. He's a movie star already. He's trying to land bigger roles, and he's trying to become one of the biggest box office draws next to The Rock. That's what he's trying to do. So his association with the WWE and Crown Jewel and the country right now might be a huge negative on what he's trying to accumulate for himself in Hollywood. For that matter, there have also been previous reports that WWE's deal with the Saudi Arabian government might also greatly be contributed to why the Great One decided not to do anything specific for SmackDown 1000. And I mean The Rock except for sending out a tweet a couple of hours before the show actually went on the air. Only time will tell if WWE will need to reshuffle Crown Jewel or they might be able to offer enough money to make this problem go away. But at this time, sources said that John Cena and Daniel Bryan's status for Crown Jewel is not a lock at all. We will find out what happens with John Cena on Monday Night Raw. By the time you see this, There may be something that happened on Monday Night Raw as far as a storyline goes. Tuesday before SmackDown, we may actually see something with Daniel Bryan. I'm actually hearing that Daniel Bryan might be pulled from the show day of, and they might do a storyline with Daniel Bryan being pulled at the event, meaning that they might film something to air on the program on Friday. But I am proud of John Cena and Daniel Bryan to to stand up to the WWE and put this bullshit political garbage to the side and just stand up for what is right. So there you go. WWE, you know, John Cena and Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan's in one of the biggest matches of the night. I would love to see Daniel Bryan work AJ Styles. I would. But if Bryan doesn't want to work, what are you going to do? This may actually work in WWE's favor. I honestly feel like we need some more build for the storyline anyway. I think we need more build for the match anyway. So maybe if they do something to kind of prolong this a little bit, we have three weeks to go till Survivor Series. Why not just do it there? So this may actually end up working out better for the WWE. Cena doesn't even need to be there. Cena's only there because the Saudi Arabian, gov- the Saudi Arabian government is requesting John Cena because he's a big name. If Cena doesn't want to work, he certainly doesn't have to work. And if he wants to get into Vince McMahon's ear and not want to do anything, what is Vince going to do? Fire him? John Cena is absolutely godlike in this co- in this company. He can do whatever the fuck he wants. He don't want to go, he's not going to go. He wants to come back for a certain match or a certain something, they're going to give it to him because he's John fucking Cena. So good on them for standing up for what they want to do. WWE at this point can't do shit. They want to go, they want to get out, they want to collect their money, and they want to move on from this fucking nightmare. I don't know when the next time we're going to see another Saudi Arabian event But I can guarantee you it's going to be a little while before we see another event in Saudi Arabia after Crown Jewel. WWE creative told before Raw on Monday, the Roman Reigns edition of the leukemia announcement, they were told before Raw that John Cena will not be working Crown Jewel. But WWE has done everything possible to try and still push John Cena as being advertised for Crown Jewel. They're hoping that he changes his mind. They're hoping that they could probably talk to him and maybe sway his opinion to actually be there. But from what I hear, from what I'm hearing right now on Monday, John Cena will not be in Saudi Arabia. So Dave Meltzer expanded on this on Wrestling Observer Radio, where he confirmed that WWE's creative team was told that John Cena wouldn't be on the Crown Jewel show. But interestingly enough, they plugged his appearance on Raw anyway. They plugged his appearance at Evolution on Sunday with graphics of John Cena and the World Cup Tournament. So they're hoping, like I said, A, 
he changes his mind, or B, they're advertising him in hopes that they could sway his opinion so they don't have to change anything. But right now, like I'm hearing, Monday Night Raw may feature a storyline to take John Cena out of Crown Jewel. He says, and I quote, there was a story about Cena and Daniel Bryan, the one from Barstool Sports. So I do know in the afternoon on Monday that Creative was told that Cena wasn't going to be on the show and he needed to be replaced in the tournament. Obviously, if you watch the show during the Kurt Angle segment, Dave Meltzer says, I was waiting and there was John Cena being advertised, so did something change? Or did they just go with the idea that, well, if we do something here and we do something somewhere else, then we can have him go? So clearly, WWE was full on with Saudi Arabia. They did not change the country or the venue, and they're going. So it's all guns blazing at this point. Cena right now advertised, but probably will not be in Saudi Arabia. I don't know what's going on with him, Daniel Bryan. I don't know if there's anything to that or not. I don't know if he wouldn't go. I don't know if that was a fake story. I asked WWE, and they didn't answer that question. I do know people, as far as the creative side, they knew about Cena. They didn't know about Daniel Bryan, end quote. It is rather interesting if WWE's creative team was told that Cena won't be on the show, and then they went ahead and promoted him again for the World Cup. It might be even more interesting if Daniel Bryan refuses to go and then gives up his WWE Championship match against AJ Styles in the process. Only time will tell, but the situation with WWE and Saudi Arabia doesn't seem to be as steady as we once thought. As Meltzer also admitted that Crown Jewel is still just amidst controversy, no matter what WWE does. So, it's going to be interesting to see, man. John Cena being at at Crown Jewel in Saudi Arabia makes no difference at all, if he's there or if he's not there. Him being in the tournament makes absolutely no difference whatsoever, if he's there or if he's not there. Who cares? It's a meaningless tournament done to just put on for the Saudi Arabian people, and the tournament is being built because WWE had little to zero time to build anything of importance for this show outside of what's already advertised. You're getting a crown uh, a crown jewel tournament with the World Cup. You're getting a universal championship. You're getting a WWE championship, and you're getting a tag team championship with the SmackDown Live tag team titles, the New Day versus The Bar. That is it. Plus the tournament. WWE took existing storylines... And the fact that we already had a Universal Championship match announced. Roman ain't going to be there. So they're going with Brock and Braun. WWE Championship, they built this up. Right? Tag Team Championships, that's three matches. And then you got the tournament. This is a nothing show. There was nothing built for this show. The tournament exists only to fill time. The winner will get nothing. The winner will not matter after the event is over. And it will be forgotten. The next day you go to work. So if John Cena is there or not, it makes absolutely no fucking difference to the show. That's the way I feel on John Cena not working Crown Jewel. I don't give a fuck if he's there or not. Who cares? It's not going to make the show better. It's not going to make the show worse. The show, it is what it is. You're either going to watch it or you're not going to watch it for the sake of watching it. Barbershop window, man. Got to shout them out. Barbershopwindow.com slash off the script. Use code BSHOP20. 20% off all your orders, man. And right there, you see in the center that new 100,000 subscriber t-shirt, bruh. You guys got to get your t-shirt, man. I want to thank everybody personally for ordering your t-shirts on Barbershop Window. It is now available. If you guys want to celebrate and commemorate 100,000 subscribers for this very channel, for this very podcast, you guys can go get your t-shirt right now. It's on sale barbershopwindow.com slash off the script. Use code BSHOP20 for 20% off. And there you guys see the full blown up version of the shirt, man. I want each and every one of you as we near 100K to go out and celebrate with me by buying one of them bad looking motherfuckers, man. That shit is fucking beast. Absolutely love it, man. The Puppet Master reigns supreme as we hit 100K. Thank you guys so very much for all that. Barbershopwindow.com slash off the script. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Now, Crown Jewel in Saudi Arabia, right? We all know this. There were rumors that it could have been relocated to New York City. 
WWE came out and said, listen, we're going to go to Saudi Arabia. We're going to keep it as it is. They confirmed on Thursday morning. Now, before they confirmed it, there were rumors that it could have been in New York City. Now, at that point, tickets tickets didn't go on sale at the proposed venue in Saudi Arabia. As Dave Meltzer reported in the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, that the Saudis were told that the event might not happen at all. So WWE told the Saudis that the event might, might be moved. So they know why as well, because it's pretty hard to deny what happened right before a bunch of other companies pulled out of Saudi Arabia and huge deals with the oil-rich country. But the Saudis are a very smart ally uh, to the U.S., and the U.S. knows it. However, it might cause WWE to relocate the event as of last week because there was so much pressure on WWE from all sides. The government, fans, fan backlash, crazy. So Barnburner reports that They were hearing at that point that WWE could have been moving Crown Jewel to the U.S. And right now, with the New York City market, that could have been one of their top choices. And I would have loved that because with the tag team match and DX versus the Brothers of Destruction with Shawn Michaels coming out of retirement, I honestly think that moment, that type of situation should be here in the States. We, as a fan base, would have appreciated that so much more instead of Shawn Michaels going over there in front of people who don't give a fuck about him being retired, probably didn't even know he was retired, you know, accepting all these types of money just to come out and wrestle in front of people that don't give a single fuck about what's going on. So then Thursday, WWE confirmed that they will remain in Saudi Arabia. So the company's full reasoning for keeping the event as scheduled was released in their reports, their third quarter reports for 2018. I quote, WWE has operated in the Middle East for nearly 20 years and has developed a sizable and dedicated fan base. Considering the heinous crime committed at the Saudi consulate in Istanbul, the company faced a very difficult decision as it related to its event schedule for November 2nd in Saudi Arabia. Similar to the other U.S.-based companies who plan to continue operations in Saudi Arabia, the company has decided to uphold its contractual obligations to the General Sports Authority and stage this event. Full year 2018 guidance is, pre- is predicated on staging the event as scheduled, end quote. That was their official release. So it looks like WWE is going to carry on this event with uh, Crown Jewel. This, of course, won't come without some fans being very upset about it. And we don't have a definitive answer. We, like I said, we will find out about John Cena tonight and Daniel Bryan on Tuesday, who have reportedly said that they don't want to go. So WWE Creative was even told... Cena was going to be advertised, but they want the creative team to carry on without him in the World Cup tournament. But it looks like their bottom line was dependent on running this big Saudi Arabian show for the next 10 years, uh, and it seems to be a lock right now. Their deal with the Saudi government seems to be a lock, and this is going to be used merely as a propaganda tool. Whether you agree with that or not, that's the statement that WWE made, and I don't know what more to add, you know? I don't really know what more to add to this. It's WWE just accepting money, and they're doing a business move without really thinking morally about the right decision. So there it is. Alexa Bliss and Natalia, they gave very political responses as to why WWE should run Saudi Arabia and Crown Jewel. Natalia explained that the culture can't be changed overnight, but WWE is taking positive steps. She believes women will eventually be able to wrestle there. You're not going to change a culture overnight. I think WWE is taking such positive steps and doing positive things over in Saudi Arabia. One day, I believe, we will be over there. Alexa Bliss agreed with this statement, claiming that it isn't out of reach and believes it can't be declared impossible. She says, and I quote, I don't feel like it's out of reach. Who knows? I don't think it's ever not a possibility. Alexa Bliss also addressed the reception she and Sasha Banks got last year when they wrestled in the United Arab Emirates uh, Emirates last year. She says, and I quote, The welcome was so warm. They were up to date with women's storylines. There were little girls crying in happiness. It was just so cool because we got to have that moment with them. It's just not a women's evolution in WWE. It's an evolution all over the world. Political fucking garbage. Nonsensical quotes. I don't care. Okay. Yes, I am with the idea of, well, if you're not there and you're not showing, then you can't change. But 
you, you, you're going to go back to the, 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 the mentality of if these people don't want to change, then they're not going to change no matter what you're doing along the way. The change has to come from within. If they don't want to change, then they're not going to change. You can try and, and sway their, their, their opinion and you can kind of sway the change. But unless these people wholeheartedly in their, in their heart of hearts want to change, then you're not going to change. Simple as that. That goes with anybody, anywhere, in any walk of life. If you don't want to change, you are not going to change. You're going to continue doing what you feel is right, and you're going to continue doing what you want to do. Simple. I don't care. I don't really care. This is political garbage. I hate hearing this shit. Who is most likely to walk out of Crown Jewel as the Universal Champion? The Universal Championship is now vacant after Roman Reigns' unexpected announcement on Raw this week that he's living with leukemia, and now it's back. He went into remission. He's been battling it for 11 years, and now it's back. He must return home to fight a battle that is much more important than anything else that takes place in a ring. But WWE must carry on. The show must go on and crown a new Universal Champion, which will take place at Crown Jewel, where Brock Lesnar will wrestle Braun Strowman one-on-one. -on -one. Dave Meltzer discussed the future of the Universal title on Wrestling Observer, where he speculated that barring WWE offering Lesnar a ton of money Way more than he has ever been offered before. There is a very strong likelihood of having Braun Strowman finally claim the Universal Championship. And he says, and I quote, Obviously the championship, Brock Lesnar versus Braun Strowman. And obviously that's going to Braun Strowman unless, I mean, you can't say 100%. I mean, they could give it to Brock Lesnar. They could give Brock a ridiculous amount of money and have a surprise ending. But I don't think that's going to happen this time. But who knows? Now... Drew McIntyre has played into this entire storyline with Braun Strowman. We could, and by the time you see this, we could be looking at a triple threat match with Drew McIntyre, Braun Strowman, and Brock Lesnar. Now, if that's the case, I am not going with Braun Strowman, and I'm going with Drew McIntyre because I know in Vince's, mys, uh, in Vince's eyes and in Vince's mind, I know he looks at Drew McIntyre as this guy is one of the guys I want to start building this show around. It's, it's impossible. And we said it ever since Drew McIntyre walked on Monday Night Raw. After that first week, we looked at him as a community and, and we're like, this guy looks like a fucking champion. And we all uttered the same thing. If this guy is not a champion on Raw or SmackDown, and I mean a world champion, by the end of the year or going into the early stages of 2019, then WWE Creative is a bunch of fucking fools. This guy has championship material written all over him. So if Drew McIntyre is somehow added to the Universal Championship match with Brock Lesnar and Braun Strowman, and he walks out of Crown Jewel as the new Universal Champion, what a feather in the cap of Drew McIntyre that would be. I'd love to see him versus Brock. I think he would thrive in that, in that match if he was added. I am much more open to that idea than having another Braun Strowman versus Brock Lesnar match. That does absolutely nothing for me on the excitement level. And then probably we'll, we'll be transitioning into a Braun Strowman versus Drew McIntyre program, and even that doesn't sit well with me. And that doesn't sit well with me because I feel like they fucked Braun Strowman over so many times to a point now where I don't even care. Braun Strowman was so over, and I mentioned this time and time again, he was so over on Monday Night Raw, such an organic feel to Braun Strowman, and then they turned him heel because they did it for Roman. Roman, they felt, needed a big heel. Braun Strowman was the only guy on that show, you know, that they felt could really be a heel and give Roman Reigns a run for his money on Monday Night Raw. But that was WWE's lack of effort in building anybody else up. So they had to do the fucking most stupidest thing that could ever be done, take the biggest babyface and turn him into a fucking heel. And now WWE sees that Roman Reigns is not going to be there for God knows how long. Now they're backtracking. They need to re hit the reset button again on Braun Strowman. Now they're turning him babyface. So, everything that you did was a complete waste of everybody's time. Everything that you did showed you why what you did originally was a fucking mistake. It's disgusting. This is what happens when they put all their eggs in one basket. You cater to one guy and one guy only every single fucking week. You're going to see the effects of that as time goes on. And this is exactly what's happening. This, is, this was my main issue 
with Roman Reigns and nobody seen it. Nobody cared to talk about it. Oh, Roman, Roman, Roman. Poor Roman. Why is everybody hating on Roman? Now you know. Now you see it. It's disgusting. Obviously, it was noted that it appears on television that the next program WWE is setting up is Strowman versus Drew McIntyre. Therefore, it would make sense if Braun Strowman is awarded the Universal title of Crown Jewel after finally beating Brock Lesnar. Now, only time will tell how this situation turns out for everyone involved. Obviously, thoughts and prayers go out to Joe NY to get better. But right now, the Universal Championship needs a new home that could very well be Drew McIntyre. I am not excited about the WWE Championship or the WWE Universal Championship, rather, title picture on Monday Night Raw. WWE on Raw needs to hit a reset button. And I'm going to mention this on Twitter leading into the show. They need to take this opportunity and hit the reset button. Everything now needs to be built around the entire roster. Not one man. You got to start elevating everybody else. You got to start. If you, if you have it in mind that Drew McIntyre is going to be the one to take this title, then you need to start building guys up to a point where when you're going to have McIntyre as the champion, you need to have a nice little list of people that he could go up against and defend that title against. Whether it's a Finn Balor, whether it's a Seth Rollins, or anybody. Right now, there's no one on that show. There is no one on that show. Monday Night Raw, you look at Monday Night Raw, they are in such a terrible fucking state right now. Something needs to be done. And this is why I mentioned that the brand split with these types of injuries to one roster, the brand split might might be coming to an end. Faster than you realize. Because this right now is just Monday Night Raw's in shambles. They may even call up somebody from NXT. Seriously, they might call up somebody from NXT to fill that void. And that was discussed on Friday. Could be an Aleister Black. You won't want to see an Aleister Black just show up on Monday Night Raw and challenge Drew McIntyre for the Universal Championship? Take my money, bruh. Take my money. Something needs to be done. It's going to be a very interesting Monday Night Raw. This roster is so depleted that I don't even think they could go three hours. They have no one lined up outside of Braun Strowman for the Universal Championship. Rollins is probably going to be knee-deep with Dean Ambrose. That's going to be over the Univer- uh, over the Intercontinental Championship, not the Universal title. They are tag team champions. you got to figure out what you're doing with the tag team titles. Monday Night Raw is going to be very interesting. Roman Reigns being out is causing chaos everywhere. It's going to make for a must-see edition of Monday Night Raw. I I want to see Monday Night Raw. I'm not giving WWE the benefit of the doubt to give me something that makes sense. I'm just going to sit there and watch the shit just unfold right before us. Seriously. It's going to be very interesting. Finally, guys, to finish this episode of Off the Script, Fox, you know, the people that are giving $2 billion for WWE programming in its current state? Yeah, those fucking clowns. Fox wants Daniel Cormier to commentate SmackDown Live. I got no problem with that. Daniel Cormier apparently is a huge fan of WWE. So you're bringing in somebody from another sport, another company, who's a big fan of what you do. So clearly, I think that's a good move. It's a good business move. You're going to have his fans come over to hear what he's got to say about the product. Maybe get some new eyes on the product. And Fox, being that they were very close with the UFC, they want somebody from that world, somebody who is a real sports athlete, somebody with a possible real sports presentation, right? Remember when we talked about Fox wanting WWE to go more sports-orientated, like NXT? They want to bring someone like that from that world to bring a little bit more reality to SmackDown Live. They want him to commentate SmackDown Live when they move to Fox in October. So WWE, right now, uh, might have something there if they invite Cormier to be on the announce team, but as Dave Meltzer discussed on Wrestling Observer Radio, WWE set up the tryout, you know, for for this, for at, at this instance, for their new business partners. Fox wants Cormier, he says. So that's the deal with Cormier. Number one, they want more sports presentation. Number two, They love Cormier from UFC, and they don't want to lose him. So that's what that's about. Fox loves Cormier. WWE's coming, right, to Fox. Cormier's a huge WWE fan. It makes sense, and I wouldn't mind seeing that whatsoever. Get rid of Byron. Get rid of Byron Saxon. The the guy just doesn't do it for me. 
He's a shill. You have Tom Phillips, Corey Graves, and Daniel Cormier. I'd like to see that. Could be a breath of fresh air. So if you can imagine Cormier sitting ringside calling the action with Phillips and Corey Graves, then you can probably envision a pretty entertaining show. He makes a lot of money, so he doesn't need the gig, but we're sure it'll be fun to have him there because he is a fan of the product. So I'm pretty sure coming in, he already knows what's going on. Only time will tell if he gets the job and how often he shows up to call the action, but WWE's new Friday night home certainly seems excited in having him come in and sit on commentary. I'm all for it, man. You get a two thumbs up from me if you want Daniel Cormier on SmackDown Live, and it certainly fits into the initiative. The more we add fuel to that fire about SmackDown Live being a little bit more sports-themed, a real sports feel to SmackDown Live, then we might be seeing some of that bleed over on Monday nights, which I can only hope. Anyway, guys, I'm getting the hell out of here, man. That's been off the script. That closes out the weekend right here for episode 245, part number three, man. Please make sure you check out my sponsors, audibletrial.com slash off the script. You guys can use our unique link and get one month free of their service plus one free audiobook of your choice. All you guys got to do is go to our link, go through the sign-up process, download the app, whether you have Android or iPhone devices, and you're going to be able to browse Audible service for free for 30 days, man. Here's the kicker. You're going to get one free audio book, but if you feel if you feel Audible is not for you, you guys can cancel within that 30 days and get the book for free no matter what. They're not going to charge you a thing. Over 200,000 choices to choose from, a lot of which, which you see there, are wrestling related, man. So make sure you guys go out and check out Audible for free. AudibleTrial.com slash off the script. And please follow me on social media, man. Twitter is where you can find me mostly at JD from NY206. Hit that subscribe button and give that fucking bell the middle finger, man. Turn on that bell and make sure you guys are notified of all my uploads. Not some, all my uploads. If you guys want to support through Patreon, patreon.com slash JD from NY 206. As you guys see this, Raw is live on the channel. Go and check the Raw review out. I'll see you guys tonight for SmackDown Live, and then I'll see you guys on Wednesday for NXT and NXT UK, and then Friday for Crown Jewel. We'll do the official review after the show. I'm JD. Hit that thumbs up, and I'll see you guys tonight for SmackDown Live. Talk to you later.